Somebody clap your hands and put your hands together for the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood that covers, the blood that delivers, the blood that heals, it's the blood, blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. What can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you have been through. It is still and always will be the blood that will get you through. We're going to talk about that this morning without further ado. Amen. Glory to God. I am going to, um, Gary, we're going to pray this morning. We're going to go into our room of word. And if you have just tuned into this and you're watching this on YouTube, we thank you for being diligent to the call of God, diligent to his word and diligent to us hearing the message of what we have come to preach. And we've come to preach nothing but the message of Jesus Christ. And if you're joining us now on Facebook. Good morning to you. We thank you for joining us. Thank you once again for clicking on and hearing thus say it, the Lord, the word of God. And if you on Facebook are not subscribed to our YouTube, we ask you to subscribe. Amen. Glory to God. You'll find our word on Wednesdays and our Sunday services. Just type in Faith and Praise Fellowship Indy with Apostle Donnie. We will come up and I guarantee you that God will bless and enrich your life. Amen. Glory to God. Those of you, all of you that are listening to the word, my father's children, I say peace be unto this house. Amen. Glory to God. It's my prayer that God will bless you, that he would keep you, that he will lift up his countenance to you and give you his peace. Amen. As we get ready to pray, as we go into this word for today, I believe that the word of God is sure, steady, and perfect. Amen. Glory to God. But it's us, the receivers, to have things in the way. And why do I know this? Because the parable of the seed, amen. And when you get a chance, go read that. The parable of the seed, the parable of the sower, you will find out what types of people there are that we must sow the word into. So as we pray this morning, without further ado, our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we tell you thank you for this moment of the word. Father God, we thank you that your will is good. We thank you that your word is good. We thank you that all of it is profitable. Father God, we are the ones to stand in the way of the word. We're the ones, our hearts and our minds, they stand in the way of what you will speak to us through many different things. And God, we ask now that you will unclog our ears, uncloud our eyes, unclutter uh, our hearts that we may receive this word. God, we ask today that you will plant into us, God. We ask today that you will speak to us. We ask, God, that you would give us revelation, that you give us clarity. God, that you give us wisdom and knowledge. God, we ask that you would do all of these things in the name of your son, Jesus. God, I ask that you would trumpet your voice to speak to your people. And Father, we thank you because we know that everything that we ask is so and so it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, all right, without further ado, let us break open, crack open this word this morning. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to be preaching to you from a topic called From Mountain to Mountain, from Mountain to Mountain. I'm going to share this word with you. Amen. Glory to God. As I get ready to uh, post it, as I get ready to share this word on your screen, I thank God this morning that after last Sunday when my words disappeared in my Bible, and after Wednesday my word disappeared in my Bible, guess what's back this morning? My words! <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. I'm excited about that. I'm so excited. It's the little things. It's the little things that make me happy. Okay, I'm going to share this word. I'm going to read it. I'm going to be coming to you from Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 through 14, and I'm going to finish it up with John 3, 16, a verse that we all know. Some of us don't even have to open our Bibles to even read it. Amen. Glory to God. So we're going to have this word. This is the word of the Lord. Genesis chapter 22, starting at verse 1. It says that after, all right, after these events, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, Abraham answered, I'm here. God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him up as an entire burnt offering there on one of the mountains that I will show you. Abraham got up early in the morning, harnessed his donkey and two of his young men with him, 
together with his son Isaac, he split the wood for the entire burned offering, set out and went to a place God had described to him. On the third day, wow, so many parallels already. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place at a distance. Abraham said to his servant, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will walk up there, worship, and come back to you. Abraham took the wood from the entirely burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. He took the fire and the knife in his hand, and he two of them walked together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. Abraham said, I'm here, son. He said, Isaac said, here is the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the entirely burnt offering? Abraham said, the lamb for the entirely burnt offering? God will see to it, my son. The two of them walked on together. They arrived at the place God had described. Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on top of it. He tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. But the Lord, messenger, called out to Abraham from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham said, I'm here. The messenger said, do, don't stretch out your hand against the young man and do not, do, don't do anything to him. I know now. I now know that you revere God and didn't hold back your son, your only son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a single ram caught by the horns in the dense underbush. Abraham went over and took the ram and offered it as an entirely burnt sacrifice instead of his son. Abraham named that place the Lord sees. This is the reason people today say on this mountain, the Lord is seen. Amen. Glory to God. In the new, in the King James Version, it said he called this place Jehovah Jireh. That means the Lord provides. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Then John 3, 16 says this for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. So this morning, as we were going through Holy Week, amen, glory to God, you know, we just celebrated resurrection last week. And I want you to know that the celebration of resurrection lasts for 40 days. Amen, glory to God. Then we start the celebrating of the Feast of Weeks. So we celebrate the resurrection for 40 days. On the 40th day of the resurrection season, we celebrate Ascension. So on the, four, on the 40th Sunday, we will be celebrating the Ascension. Amen. Glory to God. And then after that, 10 days later, we'll be celebrating what's called Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost. Amen. And it starts, you start preparing for the Feast of Pentecost on the 41st day, taking you all the way to day 50. Amen. Glory to God of when the Pentecost experience happened in the upper room. Amen. Glory to God, which is what the birth of the church. So as we are here in this moment and we're here in this dispensation of time right now, we are currently still celebrating the resurrection. Yes, saints, I want to tell you that it is not just one day. It is a 40 day celebration. Amen. Glory to God. It ain't just one day. It's a 40 day celebration. It's like with Christmas uh, or, or it is also in worship called Christmas Tide. And we celebrate it. The church celebrates it on the 25th. But I want to tell you, that's only the first day of the Christmas Tide season. You can say you celebrate it all the way up to January the 6th, which is called Epiphany. Amen. Glory to God. So you can still say Merry Christmas all the way up to January the 6th, which is Epiphany. I'm just giving you some church history this morning, some liturgical worship history that we need to know. Amen. Glory to God. So. So as we are here in this dispensation of time, it was that the Lord started speaking to me on the on the week of the what we call the Passion Week, which starts with Palm Sunday and it ends with Resurrection Day. Amen. Glory to God. He was showing to me, he showed to me openly Genesis 22. And he started to show me the parallels of what Abraham was willing to do and then what God was willing to do for mankind. This was a, this this thing that we have here was such an a special occurrence. It was a special thing because listen, remember, um, as I talk about this, I want you to know that um, the the message is still true. That it is Calvary that paid for our sins. It is Jesus who gave His life as a ransom. And guess what? I want you to know that unless 
you have a relationship with him unless you are a believer of him. You are living life without any insurance in the assurance. Yeah, let me say that again. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you don't believe in him, you are living in a world without insurance of assurance. That's why the hymn writer wrote the song. He said, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. When you're assurance, when you're assured, that means you are, you know within yourself, you have reconciled within yourself that Jesus lives, that Jesus is your savior. You are reconciled that Jesus gave his life for you. You have come to the fact, you've come to the point, you've come to the focus that this was for you, this sacrifice was for you. The word of God says, greater love no man has than to lay down his life for a friend. Amen. Glory to God. I love that God is, it said that Jesus called us together and he called us his friends. So he laid down his life for friends. And y'all know in life, what they call that in life and in service, especially in, in firefighting, and especially in um, military or police, or if you're doing uh, law enforcement, they tell you, they say when a person gave their life for people that they made the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us oh so long ago. And men and women are still giving their lives for people. Still, that sacrifice is so strong that men and women are still mirroring that sacrifice. They're still mirroring that sacrifice. But I want to shoot it to you from this angle. In this story, we meet a man named Abraham. And Abraham, y'all know Abraham was old. Amen, glory to God. Abraham waited a long time uh, before his name was Abraham. It was Abram. Amen. Glory to God. And Abram was waiting a long time for the promise of God. Abram was waiting long, so long that he couldn't wait. So for some of you out there that couldn't wait, amen. Glory to God. Listen, Abraham could not wait. And Sarah at that time, she wasn't Sarah yet. Sarah said, well, Abraham, why don't you go ahead and, 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 and sleep with my handmaiden and um, y'all, you go ahead and you're going to have a son. Amen. And so Abraham birthed a son. Uh, Abram at that time birthed a son named Ishmael. Amen. Glory to God. And Ishmael was his son with the handmaiden. Amen. Glory to God. The handmaiden Hagar. And, and, and so it came to the point where Sarah and Hagar were kind of at odds with each other. But Sarah had to understand that it was because she told her husband to go and do it that he did it. Amen. Glory to God. And so he, he decided to go ahead. He, uh, she gave him she gave him her permission. She said, yeah, go sleep with Hagar. You go ahead, Ishmael. And then and then after that, um, because I can't do it. But the funny thing about it is. After that whole thing happened, after the whole calamity happened, after Hagar left and took Ishmael and they left. And after because of the thing, because of the turmoil that was going on, because of the baby mama drama that we would call it today. She left. And then Sarah was, was, was Sarah was there. And, and, and so a, a God started talking to Abram and he said, hey, Abram, I'm going to change your name to Abraham, which means father of many nations. I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Amen. Glory to God. And so then at the same time that he changed Abraham's name, he goes and talks to Sarah and Sarah was there. And he says, Sarah, I know, uh, Sarah, you're going to have a baby. And she said, ha ha, Lord, that's funny. She started laughing at God. She said, you're a funny man. That's so funny because I'm barren and I'm beyond years. Amen. Glory to God. She felt like she had cobwebs. She felt like she was restricted. She felt like the womb was closed. She felt like that the shop was down. But how many know that God can do the impossible? But God does the impossible by opening her womb. And it said that though Abraham was of many days, that he was still fertile. And so Abraham and, 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 and Sarah, and they get together, amen, and you know the love songs start playing and the words start swooning. And the next thing you know, we have Isaac. Isaac is here. And, and Abraham has waited so long for the promise. He waited so long and said by this point that Abraham was not about nine. I say, so he was uh, full of years at this point, full of years. And so as he was full of years, he has his son Isaac, which God promised him. And so 
I know that all of us, God has promised something. And we're just waiting on the manifestation. And there are some of us that we have a vision of what God has promised us, but we feel like it's taking so long. Is there anybody out there that feels like God has promised you something, but it's taking so long? You're still waiting on the manifestation. You're still waiting on the dream to come to pass. You're still waiting on the prophecy. You're still waiting on the vision. You're still waiting on the plan. You're still waiting for things to be unlocked. And you're saying to yourself, God, where are you? God, I feel like it's been a long time. God, I feel like we're getting down to 99.9 seconds on the clock. God, what's going on? And so it's then that it's then God gives the promise to Abraham. And this was the first uh, condition of the promise that he blessed him with his son. Watch this. God decides to see just how much Abraham trusts him. And he calls to Abraham and he says, Abraham, take your only, take your son, your only son. Now, the funny thing about this is that even though, wow, this is powerful. Even though that Hagar and Abram slept together and they birthed Ishmael, God approached it from the avenue. He said, take your son, your only son, your only son, up a mountain, up a mountain. So see, the, uh, because Abra, Abram and Sarah had moved before God's time. And God said, mm, I know you did that one. And you had this one. And you did it because you fainted. However, this is the one that, that is your son. This is the one I promised to you. This is the one. It's him. And so is that this, he said, take your son, your only son. And I want you to go up a mountain and sacrifice him. Now, by this point, I'm pretty sure Abraham was like, mm, I just got the promise and now I have to sacrifice it. I just, and the funny thing about it is Sarah knew nothing the whole time. Sarah knew nothing at all. All she knew is that they were gone. That's all she knew. And I'm pretty sure, y'all know how y'all mamas are. I'm pretty sure that if she knew that, that the Lord said, hey, go sacrifice yourself. You're going to be like, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Oh, oh, wait. We just got Isaac. We just got the promise. And now we're going to go kill it. And so he decides to, he goes, he takes it, takes Isaac, and he gets him ready. And I want us to see these parallels in scripture of what God has done for us through his darling son, Jesus Christ. And so it says this, and I'm starting at verse one, so I can give you these parallels. He said, the after this event, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, Abraham answered, I'm here. God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to a land of Moriah and offer him up as an entirely burned sacrifice there on one of the mountains that I will show you. I want to stop there and show you the parallel that that's what, that's what God did for us through his darling son, Jesus Christ. He said that he took his only son. God took his, a portion of himself and, uh, and some flesh and wrapped it up together and called it his son, Jesus Christ, whom he loved. And Jesus Christ had appeared many times throughout the Old Testament. Amen. Glory to God. Most oftentimes, what did we, did we not see somebody that looked like the son of God in the fire with the three Hebrew boys? What did the king say? He said, one of them looks like the son of God. And then we saw the uh, we saw there there was someone there, um, Amen. Throughout the they, uh, there were always a, a messenger that would come, and it would talk about their appearance. There was always somebody that would come, and they were saying that I saw this person, and it looks like the Son of God, and he looks like this, and he looks like that. So Jesus was always there. It said he was there from the beginning. That's why John said the same that was there in the beginning, in the beginning, the same that was there in the beginning. So Jesus was there at the beginning in Genesis. He was there. And so that's when God says to his son, Jesus Christ, let us make man in our own image. Let us make man in our own image. How do I know this? Because man is spirit and man is also flesh. We have the spirit for God because God is a spirit. What tells us this? John chapter four says that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. I know you saw paintings. I know you saw things. I know you saw interpretations, but I want to remind you that God is a spirit. 
and a spirit cannot be painted. Let me give you that fact this morning. A spirit cannot be captured. A spirit cannot be painted. A spirit can only be felt. So that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. This is John chapter four. When he's talking to the woman at the well. And so it's at this point, then God takes spirit and he mixes it with flesh. Because guess what? Jesus Christ was made of spirit and flesh. He was made of flesh. And so then we have the flesh and they took them together. And then we got us. We got us. And so the world had gone crazy and things were upside down. And once again, God was calling for a sacrifice on a mountain. And so he found nobody perfect. Not a lamb, not a goat. Not a ram, not anything else perfect. Not anything else perfect. But he decided to take his own flesh and his own son, take his own, take the portion of his own spirit, and to offer it as a sacrifice on Calvary's mountain. As Isaac and Abraham are going up, you see them two together. God and Jesus Christ had devised this plan called salvation for you. Salvation for you. And as we see Abraham taking his only son, who he loves, up a mountain to be sacrificed. This is a mirror of John 3.16. What does John 3.16 say? It says, for God followed the world that he gave his only begotten son, his only begotten son. We see that again. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so as we're going up, listen to this. Doesn't this sound just like Calvary? Listen, it said Abraham got up early in the morning. He got up early in the morning when Jesus was being taken from judgment hall or judgment hall as he was getting ready to be crucified. They got up early in the morning. It was early Friday morning. That's why we call it Good Friday it was early in the morning that this started. Because why? Because they had to have him off the cross by sundown because of the Sabbath law. Because of the Sabbath law. And so it's at this point that so they got up early in the morning. So this shadow of this, it says it's, he took two of his young men with him together with his son, Isaac. He got up early in the morning and harnessed the donkey and took two of his young men with him together with his son, Isaac. Where do we see this again? We see this again when it's talking about Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, what did they do? They saddled a donkey for Jesus to ride on, and two of his disciples went to go get it. Here we are in Scripture. And so as we're moving and we're journeying on, it says this, it said, on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. And Abraham said to his servant, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will walk up there and worship and come back to you. Remember, there was a point when Jesus was saying to his disciples that there is this point. You cannot go with me. You cannot go to Calvary with me. I'm going to die. You guys can't be there with me. And remember, the disciples were all in the flutter. And Peter was like, they ain't going to take you. I ain't going to let them take you. I got my peace. Right here on my side, I got my peace. Even so much that Peter tried to chop off the soldier's ear that came to arrest Jesus. That will fulfill Calvary's plan. And so, as we see this in scripture, as it's paralleling itself, it said, Abraham took the wood for the entirely burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. That sounds just like when they were getting Jesus ready to go up on a hill called Golgotha, known as Calvary. They put the cross on his shoulders for him to bear. Are we seeing these parallels in scripture? And so then it's at that point when it says that I just said to his father, Abraham, my father, he, Abraham said, here am I. He said, here is the fire and here is the wood. But where is the lamb for the entirely burnt 
sacrifice. This is the point in which we recognize that it was Jesus and John the Baptist was in the wilderness and he was baptizing and he looked up in a distance and he said, look, here comes the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world. And this that this point right here that we see this image and this shadow of Jesus becoming our sacrificial lamb. And so at this point right here, as we're moving on, it said this is said that. Um, the two of them walk together. So I want you to know that God and Christ were walking in tandem with the plan of Calvary. They were walking in tandem because this was his mission. This is what the job that he had to fulfill. And so as we are moving on, it's that they arrived at the place that God had described to him. Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. And what does that sound like? It sounds like when they got Jesus up Calvary's Heal, and they were preparing the cross for the sacrifice of the lamb. They were getting it ready. They were getting Jesus ready. It said he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. That sounds like to me is when they got Jesus on the cross and they were nailing his hands. They were nailing his feet. They were fastening him to the cross. And then it says this, it said that Abraham stretched out his hand, took the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. But the Lord's messenger called out to Abraham from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. He said, I'm here. The messenger said, don't stretch out your hand against your young man and do anything to him. I know that you revere God and you did not hold back your son, your only son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a single ram caught by its horns in the dense underbush. I want to talk about the dense underbush for just a minute. The dense underbush, if you look at what it is, uh, uh, the dense underbush was thorn. The dense un it, it was sticks and things like that of that nature, but he saw a ram caught in a thicket. And so that for us is the shadow of Jesus Christ wearing the crown of thorns. He wore a crown of thorns on his head. He was caught in the thicket. My God, he was caught in the thicket just for us. He was the lamb that was caught. He that will be sent to the slaughter. And so it said this, it said that it said uh, he offered the, the ram as the entirely burnt sacrifice instead of his son. And that right there was God saying to Abraham, no, you're not going to have to kill your son, but I'm going to send my own in the place of everyone here. I don't want you to kill your son, but I'm going to let mine die for the sake of many, for the sake of many. And it said that, they, that the Abraham named the place the Lord sees. This is the reason why people today say on this mountain, the Lord has and so it's right here that we understand that Calvary still has power. There is a mountain called Calvary. There is a hymn writer penned a song that says, this that on a hymn far away stood an old rugged cross, and then it's to you get to ref, the refrain of the hymn that says, So I'll cherish the old rugged cross and I'll trade it someday for a crown. Is that we find right here that he we sorry, we said, When does the other song said, When I survey the wondrous cross, when we think about Calvary, Calvary is where change happened, Calvary is where sin lost its power. Calvary Calvary is where death lost its sting. Calvary is at Calvary that sickness was dispelled. It's at Calvary that every curse was broken at Calvary. My problem today, you know what my problem today is? My problem today is that we are still praying for God to break generational curses when actually the fact of the matter is that every generational curse was broken on Calvary. We don't need to ask God to break generational curses. We just have to ask God to apply the blood. Why the blood? Because as the songwriter said that the blood, it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley, which means that everyone in the midst of the blood is covered. So we ought to start going back to pleading the blood over our family, over our friends, over our jobs, over our money, over our cars, over our things, because the blood is good. It's still good. It's still good for our healing. It's still good for deliverance. It's still good for wisdom. It's still good for knowledge. The blood is still good. 
And so as we are here this morning, I want to show you what happened in the rest of the promise. It said the Lord's messenger called out to Abraham from heaven the second time and said, I give my word as the Lord that because you did this and didn't hold back your son, your only son, I will bless you richly and I will give you countless descendants, as many as the stars in the sky and the grains on the sands of the seashore, and they will conquer their enemy cities. All nations of the earth shall be blessed because your descendants, because you decided to obey pay me. What that means right there is that God had continued to bless Abraham's promise. He said, through you is the shadow of Calvary and through you, because you decided not to spare your own son, I'm going to give mine so that the blood will flow forward through generation and generation and generation. So the blood is still healing. The blood is still delivering. The blood is still setting free. The blood is still changing. The blood is still breaking chains. The blood is still doing its job. And so I want to bring something to you as I go to my virtual seat. The word of God says this in Isaiah. It says, surely he has borne our griefs. It said that he was what? wounded for our transgressions and he was what bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed what that currently means is that surely he is born everything that grieves us everything that torments us everything that takes us out of the will of God. It said that he was wounded for our transgression. That means our sins, our iniquity, the things that we think, the things that we say, the things that we do, or the things in past tense that we've done, said, or thought. It goes towards that. It said that he had, was wounded for our iniquities, our sins that were ever before God. And it said that what said the chastisement of our peace was upon him. So that means that every lash and whip that he took was so that you could be in peace, that you could be in insurance, that you could be in assurance, the knowing that Jesus Christ paid it all for you, that you can live in peace, knowing that you have an eternal home, that you can live in peace, knowing that you have an intercessor, that you can live in peace, knowing that you can be healed, that you can live in peace, knowing that ways will be provided, that doors will be open, that windows will be open, that ways will be made so that you can live in peace. And by his stripes, that every flash, every piece, and the hanging of flesh is your healing. It said that when they whipped Jesus, they was whipping it with a cat of nine tails. And this thing was like a claw. And what it did is when they whipped it, they had to twist and it would reach out and grab a piece of flesh and rip it from the body of our Savior, Jesus. It said that he was beat bloody beyond recognition with flesh and blood hanging from his body. I want you to know that that is a, a symbol of your healing, whether you're sick or you got something going on in your body. The flesh was for your healing. The hanging was for your healing. So that means that Jesus took your sickness and he hung it in his flesh. My God, today, we ought to thank God for the blood. If there's anybody out there that knows it's from mountain to mountain that our faith was sealed is from the Mount of Moriah. And they call it the place of Jehovah Jireh where the Lord provided. And we find God again providing on Calvary a sacrifice for us. He said that I will, he, God will provide himself a sacrifice. And we see that on Calvary, God provided himself a sacrifice for us for us for us and it was for us from mountain to mountain that god has provided right here at this right here right here right here at this point it's what we're going to do right now i'm going to um for those of you that are watching us on facebook we thank you and we bless you um, for being here with us. Amen. Um, if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, I want you to confess him as your Lord and Savior. I want you to go to your Play Store, download, download the Bible, download the Bible, and study of him. Read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then you will be able to say that he is your Savior. You'll be able to believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. And when you do that, you'll be assured that you are taking 
advantage of this gift called Calvary. Amen. Glory to God. And if you are joining us today and um, I have, I'm going to go, we're going to go into our Holy Communion, but I want to say this before we leave live and before we stop recording, I want to say this to you. Um, if you are invested in Christ and you are trusting him as your savior, there's another way you can help us out. And that is through uh, um, helping us through giving. Amen. Glory to God. We have avenues of giving. Amen. I'm going to put it right here on your screen so you can see it briefly. Amen. Glory to God, because we're going to go off right here into our Holy Communion. Amen. We're going to move and do what the Spirit of the Lord says. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God right here. Hallelujah. I'm going to so put this on your screen really quickly so that you can see this, and I, I'm hoping that you'll get it. Amen. Glory to God. But we're going to go into Holy Communion. We're going to do what the Spirit of the Lord says. Amen. Glory to God. If you're sharing with us right now, if you're looking right now, here are the ways of giving. Amen. I will say them briefly. Here it is. The Cash App. Cash App is dollar sign FNP 2007. You can do it through your Cash App. FNP 2007. Don't forget that dollar sign. Or you can search us on Gillify. Search Faith and Praise Fellowship Indy with Apostle Donnie. You'll see a lovely uh, picture of our pastor first lady. You can give there. If you want to do it by snail mail, it's P.O. Box. 78122, Indianapolis, 4627801222. Amen. That's by snail mail. Or if you don't have it to give, pray that the Lord will send someone that has it to give. Pray the Lord will send the laborers. Amen. Glory to God. Well, Facebook and YouTube, it's been real. It's been nice. And I want to say this to you. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he lift up his countenance to you and give you his peace. We will see you next time.